In this video, I play a $600 buy-in tournament at the win, where first place is over $50,000. Let's take our seat and get into the action. In the first film-worthy hand of the tournament, it is level 2, blinds are 100, 200, 200, and we have about starting stack, which is over 100 bigs. We have ace, 4 of spades in the small blind, and the button limps for 200. When my opponent limps here, it should be generally pretty weak, so I'm going to isolate to 1,000. The big blind folds and the button makes a call. The flop comes 5, deuce, deuce. This is a pretty good flop. We have ace high, which is often going to be good by itself. We have backdoor spades, and we have a gut shot. On paired boards, you're most of the time just going to bet small, so I bet 800 into 2,400. My opponent makes a call. The turn is a 6 of hearts. I don't think there's much reason to bet here, so I go ahead and check. My opponent, however, decides to bet 2700 into 4k. I suppose they could have a small pair that they're betting for value slash protection here, but I think they're often just going to have bluffs as well, like heart draws. Besides, we still have a gut shot, so I make the call. The river is the eight of clubs. I check once again, and this time my opponent bets 4000 into almost 10,000. I decide to put my hero cape on and make the call. We were correct, my opponent does have hearts. Just not the hearts we wanted to see as he shows 9-7 of hearts for the rivered straight. I think we definitely had the right idea there, but unfortunately he got there on the river. In the next hand, we are at level 4 where blinds are 200, 400, 400. I have about 15k or 40 big blinds. Early position raises to 1000 and we call with king 10 of clubs in the big blind. The flop comes ace 9 4 2 clubs. I check and my opponent bets 1600. With them raising in early position, this board definitely hits their range with ace x, so I'm just going to make the call. The turn is no help, it's the 4 of hearts. I consider leading here as I can have a 4 in the big blind, but I don't have that many, so I go ahead and check. This time, my opponent bets 3500 into almost 6000 With the nut flush draw, for this price, we once again make the call. The river is the five of hearts. We miss everything and check. My opponent ends up checking back and shows ace jack off for top pair. Pretty standard hand. Next up, it is level 4 where blinds are 200, 400, 400. We have about 9500, which is about 23 big blinds at this point. We have pocket 9s under the gun and raised to 800. The cutoff, the small blind, and the big blind end up making the call. The flop comes 10, 7, 5, 2 spades. The small blind and the big blind check to us, and with 1 over to our pocket 9s, I'm going to start with a check. The cutoff ends up betting 1800. This time the blinds fold, and nothing to do here for us but make the call. The turn is a 10 of diamonds. This is actually a pretty good card, as it's now less likely for my opponent to have a 10. I check, and my opponent checks back. The river is the three of diamonds. I decided to go for value here by betting small for 1200. After thinking about it now, I think I could have definitely gone a lot bigger though. They definitely don't have a 10 as they check back the turn. This means they most likely have a lower pair to my nines, like 8-7 or some 5x, or pocket deuces and up. And I can have bluffs here, like miss spade rolls. Anyways, my opponent ends up making the call, we show, and are good. Next up, we are in the same level and I finally have a premium, Pocket Queens. We have about 14,000 to start the hand, which is about 40 big blunts. There is an under the gun raise to 1,000. The button makes a call and we 3 bet to 4,200 from the small blunt. The under the gun player ends up 4 betting to 11,000. The button folds and actions back to us. At this stack depth and only a couple thousand more, we are just going to put it in. We go all in and my opponent makes a call. We show and hear some good news. My opponent shows pocket tens for a lower pair. All we have to do is hold and we will double up. The flop comes 996. The turn is another 6 and the river is a 7. We end up holding and get a nice double. We are finally above starting stack for the first time in this tournament. In the next hand, we are at level 6. Blinds are 300, 600, 600. I have about 30k in my stack, which is about 50 big blinds. We have pocket nines again, and this time the early position player raises to 1400. Middle position calls, and we call in the small blind. Could maybe squeeze here, but I think pocket 9s leans towards calling, while pocket 10s is definitely a squeeze. The flop comes 8-7-7. Seven, seven. I check, and action checks through. The turn is the deuce of spades. With this action, I feel that I often have the best hand here. I think the original Razor would bet the flop most of the time with a bigger pair. And of course, if middle position had anything, they would probably bet the flop. With a flush draw now on board, I decide to bet for value as well as some protection. I bet 1900. The early position player makes a call and the middle position player folds. The river is a three of spades. 
This completes the flush draw that came in on the turn, but otherwise doesn't really change anything. I check, and this time my opponent bets 5800. This is about 60% pot, so it's pretty sizable. At this point, we definitely just have a buff catcher, and not a very good one now that I think about it. We have no spade to block the flush that came in, and we have two cards I wish my opponent had for 10-9. There are still some bluffs, like Jack-10 or 6-5, but it's not very many. With this said, I'm a station and I end up making the call. My opponent shows pocket 8 for a flopped boat. Was not expecting that one. Next up, we are in the same level and I have about 20,000 chips or about 35 big ones. I have queen 8 of spades on the button. The fish from one of my earlier hands who limped 9-7 of hearts ends up limping on the cutoff. I definitely want to target this player, so I go ahead and raise to 2,000. The blinds make the fold, and the cutoff makes a call. The flop comes king 10-3. My opponent checks me, and with a huge range advantage, backdoor spades, and backdoor straight draw, I am definitely going to bet this board. I decide to size up to 3,000 into about 5,500. My opponent makes the call. The turn is a 9 of spades. My opponent checks to me, and this is one of those perfect cards to continue on. We now have a flush draw, a gut shot, and my two cards could be alive if my opponent has something like hearts. For this reason, I decide to put max pressure on and jam for about 15,500. Oh, yeah. This is about 130% pot, which is a pretty big overbit. My opponent does not take too long before calling. I turn my hand over, he turns his hand over, and shows ace 9 off. He practically snap called me with just a 9. After the chips are pushed into the middle, the river comes the 3 of hearts. This is no help, and just like that, we are out. I knew my opponent was quite loose and call heavy, but man, this was pretty loose to call the flop and obviously to call an overbet jam on the turn. Yikes. With that, we end up rebuying and coming back with about 15 minutes left of level 6. The next hand happens at level 7, where blinds are 400, 800, 800. We have about 25k or starting stack, which is about 30 big blinds. After an early position raise to 1600, we end up making the call and the hijack with king queen off. The button and the small blind both make the call as well. The flop comes 1092. Action checks around to the button who bets 3000. The original raiser makes a call and with a gut shot and two overs, we are not going anywhere, we make the call as well. The turn is eight of diamonds. This time action checks around. The river comes the queen of diamonds. When action checks to me, no need to go for value here as obviously diamonds get there as well as any jack makes a straight. I'm just looking to get to showdown. Getting to showdown is what we do as the button ends up checking back. The early position player shows 8-7 of clubs and we turn our hand over expecting to probably win until the button shows pocket jacks. I know there were diamonds that came in, but I think it's a bit too tight for him not to go for value on the river. He could probably get a crying call from a one pair type holding like mine. But it is disastrous if he gets raised, so I don't really blame him. Next up, we are in the same level, and we are down to about 15k, which is about 18 big blinds. I raise pocket 10s under the gun to 1600. The button and the small blind make the call. The flop comes queen 8 6, 2 spades. Action checks to me, and although there is an overcard to my pair, I think I should very often just be good here against these opponents, and I just want some protection. I bet 3500 into about 6400. Both the button and the small blind make the call. The turn is the four of diamonds. Action checks to me again, and with two people calling my flop bet, the correct play here would most likely be to just check. I say most likely because at the time I really just thought I had the best hand here. I thought one of my two opponents is probably on a flush draw or a straight draw. So I end up jamming for 9,800 into about 17k. Both my opponents end up making the fold. Don't really like this hand as if we get called, we are essentially dead by a queen. Let's chalk this one up to a live read that ended up working out, although really wasn't that necessary. In the next hand, we are at the same blind level and are back to starting stack or about 30 big blinds. We limp in the small blind with 7-5 off and the big blind checks. The flop comes 10-9-6. I start off with a check and my opponent checks back. The turn is a 7 of spades. With a pair and a gut shot, I now decide to bet 1,000. I also want to protect against the spade draw that came in. My opponent ends up raising to 3,500. Any 8 does make a straight on this board, but I would really expect him to bet that on the flop. As well as any better pair than mine like a 9 or 10. Can't fold quite yet, I make the call. The river is the jack of spades. 
I check and this time my opponent bets 5,000 into about 9,400. The flush draw does now come in and with no spade, I don't think I want to call here. If my opponent was bluffing on the turn, it would have probably been with something like spades. I make the fold and my opponent will later tell me he had four high, but four deuce of spades. <laughs> At nearly the last blind levels until late reg ends, level 8 at 500, 1000, 1000, we end up getting ace king in versus an early position jam and end up chopping as he had ace king himself. Let's hope for better results as we get ace king again in the very next hand. We have about 20,000 or 20 big blinds. There is an under the gun raise to 2000. The low jack jams all in for 20,100. We are in the hijack and nothing to do here but go all in ourselves. The original Razor folds and turns out we are up against Jack-10 off. This is obviously a very bad jam by Jack-10. This becomes even more bad, for us at least, as the flop comes Jack-5-deuce. The turn is 8 of diamonds and the river is a 6 of diamonds. We get no help as Jack-10 off outflops us. We take one last look at the blind levels and are gone. Alright guys, as you saw, we were in this tournament for two bullets, cashed out for nothing. Didn't want to fire a third. That last hand, Ace King versus Jack-10, not sure what that guy's doing, but that's live poker. And the first time we busted, Queen-8 suited, I think it was good. I think it was a good bluff, semi-bluff. That guy could have even just had hearts, so that's the reason we really chose to jam there. Could have checked back, but he could have just had hearts and called with like and been behind already. Obviously his call with a nine was also pretty bad. You have to know who to bluff and who not to bluff. And clearly that guy was not one we should have been bluffing, but when he can still have hearts there, I think we should be bluffing that. And I expect him to fold a 10 or a nine a lot, even though he almost snapped called us, snap called us. So it is what it is. If you enjoyed the tournament vlog, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you thought. There's gonna be more tournaments. We love tournaments. Let's go.